Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and I'm super excited about this video today because it's a project I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm gonna show you how I made this linen dress. Today is a collaboration with my friend Christina over at the DIY Mommy. I'll link her channel below. She's gonna show you how she made this exact same dress, so in her version. So you can go watch that after you finish watching my tutorial. She does all kinds of wonderful DIY projects and tutorials and home decor. She is a super awesome person to follow. What I love about this dress is I'm nursing mother right now and it buttons down and so I'm always looking for something that I can nurse in and if it doesn't have buttons I can't wear a dress and I also like that it's great for fall with the three-quarter length sleeves I'm kind of picturing myself getting a jean jacket or something to go with it and I really just want to make it over and over again I just love this dress and how it fits it was super simple to make so even if you're brand new to sewing I'm gonna walk you through all the steps so that you can make this too I will link in the description below where I found this striped linen fabric so I actually used a pattern for this dress. I'll leave a link below where you can find it. Now you guys know I'm more of a winging it person than pattern, so as you're gonna see in this tutorial, I use the pattern for the shape of the dress, and I mostly after that kind of go off my own sewing judgment, so I'm not a super rule follower in that area. So I don't make all the markings that the pattern requires, but I'll show you kind of how I do it. Before I started this project, I took lessons from my other projects where I didn't do this, and I washed and dried and ironed this fabric first. That way, I won't be surprised if my dress happens to accidentally make it into the dryer and shrink on me like some of my other clothes that I've made have done. I thought it would be a good idea to print the pattern at home, and I would highly, highly recommend you never try that unless you are hundreds of miles from the nearest FedEx or Staples or somewhere where you can get this printed in the large scale format. So the pattern comes in a small scale format where you can print it off on 50 sheets of eight and a half by 11 letter paper and then tape the whole thing together or you can just have it printed onto some large pieces of paper, highly recommended. After doing my measurements, I decided to do it in the small size. Some of my measurements didn't quite line up with the small or the medium, so I just opted to go for small because that's usually kind of what I would buy. So for reference, I am 5'5 and about 130 pounds, so it does run a little bit big. This does have the tie in the back so you can kind of if it is too big you can tie it tighter now when a pattern asks you to cut on the fold basically what they're showing you is this you just fold the fabric in half and then you put that line on the fold and cut around that so that when you open it it's twice as big and it's connected in the middle of course so you're gonna see me cutting on the fold a little bit now if you are a by the book sewer make sure to mark all the pattern markings so that you can line everything up just perfectly you know me, I like to wing things, so I did not do that. When the pattern asks me to cut two, I like to use the fabric for the second piece because the fabric sticks to the fabric better than paper sticks to fabric, but whenever I'm cutting out paper on fabric, I pin the pattern piece in place and then just use fabric from there on out. Now, you'll notice that I'm being pretty particular with the way everything lines up, and that's because I use stripes. Now, if you are brand new to sewing, this is your first project ever, I would recommend using a calico or something that maybe has like a floral or something that isn't so important to line up. So I made sure on my dress to line up when I was cutting out the pattern, all of the stripes so that it would line up nicely. With this dress, it's really important that all the stripes line up uh, like in the front where the buttons meet, or this would be all kinds of messed up. If it was like this, you wouldn't want that. Now you'll notice that for the neckline facing, the pattern indicates to cut it on the bias. You'll notice here how I slant the pattern piece so that the fabric grain, which is just the way the fabric runs, lines up with the arrow. To place the pockets in the dress, I measured down down three inches and sewed the pocket pieces in place on all the skirt pieces.
Then whenever I sewed the side seams together, I just went around the pocket. So I went down the top of the side seam, around the pocket, and then down through to the hemline. Now, just like every other seam and edge in this tutorial, I finish mine off with a serger. If you don't have a serger, you can use a tight zigzag stitch. This just helps everything to be nice and clean on the inside and for these not to unravel. My fabric is linen, so it has a tendency to want to unravel a bit because it's more of a looser weave. For the front darts, I used a crayon for the markings and since I couldn't find a ruler, I used the straight edge of a folder. Mark on the lines of the size you're making. So I made the small, so I was looking for my small dash make little marks at the bottom and the top and then just connect them with a straight edge to make a triangle. Fold along the middle line and then you sew along the two outside lines. And then to make everything lay nice and flat, you press the excess of the dart towards the center front of the garment. Then to finish the bodice, I put the two front bodice pieces onto the back bodice piece with right sides together and sewed down the side seams with a 5 8 inch seam. Now for the gathering stitch in the skirt, you want to put a pin three inches from each outside edge of the skirt piece. The reason for that is you need a spot that's not gathered for the button area right here. So I just marked those with pins and then put a gathering stitch in between the two pins so that it stopped three inches from the outsides. Now if you're brand new to gathering, what you do is you turn your machine tension as high as it'll go and you turn your stitch length as high as it'll go and that will, when you push the fabric through, create gathers. Now I had to adjust my gathers whenever I laid my skirt down to line up with my bodice. My skirt was a little bit smaller than my bodice so I just pulled the stitches out a little bit and made sure that the side seams of the bodice lined up with the side seams of the skirt and then just pin the whole thing in place. After that, I sewed it. Now make sure to first readjust your stitches. You don't want to have a long stitch length and a high tension when you're sewing the skirt to the bodice. So instead, just put it back to the usual about three or four tension and then the normal stitch length. Next, I sewed the shoulder seams 5 8 inch from the top to complete the top of the bodice. Okay, now for the sleeves. First, you take the sleeve, fold it in half with right sides together, sew down the length of the sleeve with a 5 8 inch seam, and then you gotta put a little bit of a gathering stitch around the curve of the sleeve because it never wants to fit in just perfectly. So you have to put a little bit of a gather. So it's the same kind of stitch that you put in for the skirt. You just turn the stitch length up as high as it'll go and then match up the sleeves at the side seams. Put the sleeve inside the dress so that right sides together gather ever so slightly so that it fits in and then sew all the way around. Make sure to finish it again with a zigzag or a serger stick so that it's nice and finished off and then your sleeves are attached. All right, at this point, it's really starting to look like a dress. The next step is to attach the bias tape to the neckline and to create the button area in the front. I attached my bias tape at right angles and then folded it in half and pressed it flat. Before attaching the bias tape to the neckline, I pressed the button placket area, the raw edge over towards the wrong side of the fabric, about a half inch, and then I pressed it over about an inch, I just made sure that it lined up with the top notch, just like this placement here, which hopefully will be less confusing on how I show you than how I'm saying it, because it's really not that confusing, it's just one of those things that I feel like it's easier if you see it. After pressing that in place, I attached the bias tape around the neckline with the raw edges all facing up. After that, I just pressed everything inward so that the neckline is nicely finished and the button placket is laying flat.
Then I went around stitching very close to the edge of the neckline and the button placket all the way around the dress. Next, I put a hem in the dress all the way around. I did not really measure. I just kind of like to fold it where I think the placement's nice. So in my dress, the stripe ended right at about the perfect place. So I just folded it up towards the wrong side and then folded it again and then went around stitching so that this navy line ends at the bottom of the dress. Next, I did the ends of the sleeves. Now there's a few options for this. You can just hem it like usual. You can do a short sleeve. You could do a longer sleeve. I decided to do the elastic version because I like the way it looks nice and fitted. I just measured my arm with some elastic to get how tight I wanted it and then cut two pieces. Then I just put the hem in like usual, folding it up about a half inch and another half inch, sewing all the way around but leaving about a half inch open to work my elastic through. I joined the ends of the elastic and then stitched the opening closed. Next, to create the ties in the back, I just folded the pieces in half and stitched all the way around at about a half inch seam with right sides together. I turned it right side out, pressed it flat, and then repeated for the other tie. Then I just folded the ends in and pressed again. I top stitched around the ties to give them a nice finished look. And then to attach it, I placed the ties four inches in from the side seams on the back of the dress and sewed a square with the X in the middle for both ties. Now these ties are optional, but I like the way it gives the dress a little bit of a better fit around the waistline. Okay, next for the buttons, I started by finding a placement at the top that I liked for the top button, and then I just went from there. So for me, the best placement on my dress was every three inches for a button. There are markings on the pattern. Again, I just kind of thought I would instead wait till my dress was all done and just see where I thought the buttons would better go because for an example, this dress where the button I think was supposed to go was gonna be a pretty low neckline. So I decided to just have it go over a little bit further and it made my neckline a little bit higher. So what you do is you use a buttonhole foot you put the button in. This helps the button maker to know the size of your button, so how big to make the buttonholes. You put it on your machine. You go to the buttonhole setting. Mine was number 41 for my machine. And then you pull down the little plastic thing in the back because that's what hits the ends of the button foot to tell it when to start and stop. And then you just press go and the whole thing happens automatically. Now I like to keep my hands on my machine and kind of guide it through to make sure nothing gets hung up because if there's a spot where there's a lot of bulky excess fabric, the machine likes to get kind of stopped up a little bit. So I just like to kind of guide it through, but it'll do it automatically for you. Now I cut it open with some scissors. It's better to use a seam ripper, but again, I can never find the right tools in my house. I didn't feel like running to the store. So I just use scissors. And then making sure that the stripes lined up, I put the button kind of underneath the buttonhole to find where would be the best spot for it. And then just hand stitched all of the buttons in place.
And that's it. I love the way this dress turned out. Super nursing friendly. There is a tunic version of this. There is a shirt version. And once you make something once, it's so much easier to make it again and again because you know all the steps. You don't have to even hardly think about it. I think I need to stay up late next Friday night and just sew my whole fall wardrobe because this dress is really perfect. I love the way it fits because it's not super precise. So if you're a new sewer and you're a little bit scared of getting the right fit, adding this tie in the back and the elastic around the arms really helps for this to be the kind of dress that it does not have to be super precise. I have a tutorial on how I made another linen dress by copying my clothes. I also have one on a girl's dress. I'll leave those in the description box below so that you can try some other sewing projects. Now head over to my friend Christina, see how her dress turned out, what she did differently from me, and then also, of course, subscribe to her channel while you're over there. Well, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.